Welcome to the production game, your daily shot of instant music production, inspiration and insight. I'm uh, Mike Monday and today we're going to be talking about how not to become a great music producer or at least how to do it really slowly at a snail's pace. I'm going to give you um, the basic idea and then at the end of it I'm going to tell you how it works on a uh, weekly basis, how you can um, get the most from the process, because I'm sure some of you will know what I'm telling you already. So one of the things that I notice, I've noticed um, a lot in the people who come into the program or people who, who do my free stuff and send me emails about how they work, is that they tend to uh, do their music production sessions, uh, they have day jobs, obviously, most people do have day jobs, and they do their music production sessions in big chunks, uh, maybe at the weekend. So uh, a Saturday and a Sunday, they'll say, right, I'm going to do six hours on Saturday, and eight hours on a Sunday, or whatever it might be. And the problem with this is it um, rarely works very well. I mean, it does work, but it is uh, a lot more arduous than it needs to be. Because if you think of yourself as a rock, that's meant to be a rock, by the way, <laughs> stuck um, on, on a hill. OK, so in order to get that rock moving at all, the most force that you need to apply is at the start. OK, so just to get it moving is the most difficult thing you will have to do. As it starts moving, you need to push it less and less and less until it starts rolling down the hill. Obviously you need to push it multiple times in order to get it to get it moving but it will roll down the hill. So if you apply this to uh, the doing doing big chunks of time uh, uh, once a week or twice a week um, model of doing things then what you are essentially doing is you are spending half of your time or a large portion of your time actually getting that rock moving in the first place and then you get it moving, you might get it sort of some of the way down the hill, but then it stays, it stops there, and you go away, and you take another five days off, and then you come back to it, and then you have to push it again, and get it moving again, and really, really push hard, and then it goes a little bit further, and then you leave it, and then, and then you uh, walk away from it. Obviously, this isn't a good use of your time uh, or energy, because a lot of the session is actually going to be about getting any momentum at all. Plus, if you think about it, when you do long sessions, the fact that it is an enormously long amount of time could mean, uh, it, especially if your last session wasn't a particularly good one, it could mean that you need a lot more willpower to actually do it. Because you're like, nah, I've got to do six hours, and last time it didn't work very well, so oh, I'm going to do this. So it, involve, it, it means you procrastinate before, before doing it, because a long chunk of time is a lot to commit to. Plus when you're actually in that chunk of time. You know that phrase, tasks expand to fill the time available. Well, because your brain knows you've got ages, maybe you've got Saturday and Sunday, six hours a day, or, or whatever it might be, 12 hours if, if you're going completely crazy, then you will not do as much as you need to do at the start. You might fiddle around, you might start to perfect things, get really perf perfectionist about things. You might think, oh, well, actually, I really need to learn about this. I've got ages to do what I need to do, so I'm just going to go and have a look at some tutorials, get lost in the tutorial trap. Having a large amount of time to do your music means it's much more difficult to actually focus on what you are doing. You're much more likely to procrastinate. Okay, so for all of those reasons, that, uh, doing it like that uh, means that you will tend to, you are kind of swimming against the tide to use, to mix up my metaphors. So instead of I've got to learn to keep on putting my pens in the right place, in the same place, so I never lose them. Anyway, so instead, this is what I suggest you do. Again, you are this rock stuck on this hill, um, and instead of an enormous amount of force, I suggest you go and get some smaller pebbles rocks and just put them behind the rock. Now what this does 
is it means eventually that the combined force of all of these smaller rocks means that you there in total it's a much greater force and the rock starts moving of its own accord almost and then it just carries on rolling down the hill and you build up this enormous amount of momentum so obviously here the more observant amongst you will know what I'm talking about is daily practice okay the great thing about daily practice is that a really small chunk of time half an hour an hour an hour maybe even 15 minutes is really easy to commit to and easy for your brain to go yeah I'll do that the amount of time that you pick it if you're stuck right now if you are that rock on that hill if you are completely stuck then make it the most important thing about the amount of time that you spend is that it's small enough that you will definitely do it I mean there was a guy there is a guy on start now finish fast who was stuck he wasn't doing anything um, and he kind of came to a crisis point and I told him to literally every day sit down in front of the DAW turn it and turn it on and just sit there in front of it for 10 minutes that's how he started and just last week I think he posted a, a post on the Make Music Life forum where he'd completed I, rank, I think it was around seven tracks and, and that was from this the first rock which was literally sitting in front of the DAW without just turning it on with, without actually doing anything for 10 minutes he's now finished seven tracks um, the other thing um, about uh, a small chunks of time is that all of the problems that there are with really big chunks of time are gone so because you've got such a small chunk, chunk of time say half an hour to do something you actually do it you focus you don't look, look about it plus you can focus you can focus for half an hour uh, maybe an hour pretty in intently uh, which you can't do you simply can't the brain isn't able to do it for six or eight hours at a time um, and obviously as I said because they're small chunks of time you actually will do it you'll, you'll sit down uh, and, and do it and because you're doing it daily and the, the momentum that that brings you'll start to see your progress and when you start to see your progress what happens it goes up your priority list if you're currently finding thinking there's something inside you where you really want to produce music but you're finding that there are other priorities that are coming higher than it it's probably because you haven't got that momentum you're not seeing the progress when you see that progress when you see what's possible when you see what you have within you when, like in actual concrete terms finished music m forward momentum magically the, you, that music making becomes a priority you don't have to think it into being a priority it just becomes it so this is why daily practice is so powerful now when I say daily if you can't make it daily of course what I'm talking about is as regularly as possible so the last thing I'm going to share with you today is how um, to kind of work this daily progress a few a few pointers on um, how I think how I've noticed it works best um, so as I've already said set aside a small chunk of time every day um, as I said it needs to be small enough so you will definitely do it don't worry about the fact that you won't you don't think you can get much done in that chunk of time at first okay they set aside a small chunk of time, preferably at the same time um, each day, although that isn't necessarily. The reason this is that the same time is because you'll get used to doing it and it will be easier to do. Obviously, that's not possible for everyone who have got you know strange shift work and, and, and stuff like that, but a small chunk of time each day. Secondly, each week have a weekly have a weekly goal okay so decide what you're going to finish in that week it could be a track it could be seven tracks it, I mean it, it could be part of a track make sure the goal is towards actually finishing something though, rather than learning something that's another mistake I see a lot of people making is their goal is about well I'm going to learn how to create 
a hi-hat from scratch or something like that. Forget about creating your sounds from scratch for now. Think about creating music, OK? <laughs> so have a, weekly, have a weekly goal. Then the next thing to do is to uh, split the goal into the days, what you can do on each day. So you know how many days you can do it. Hopefully it's seven, maybe it's five, maybe it's three. Split that goal into day, what you're going to achieve on each day. I mean, you even know how much time you're going to have, you're, you're going to spend. So at this point, you might realize that this goal is either um, too easy or too challenging. The ideal um, area you want to be in is just beyond achievable. Okay? So in terms of um, flow, that kind of that 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 m effortless momentum feeling where things are just coming out. Researchers have found that the ideal amount of challenge you need for a task in order to get into flow is about four or five percent. I think it's four percent actually, four percent above what you are currently able to do. So make that goal just beyond achievable. If you can't hit, if you don't hit it, that's fine. A goal isn't there just to be hit. That's just the objective. A lot of the outcomes of having a goal is that, is that it's motivating. Okay, so split. And if you do find that that weekly goal is too easy, decide to do more. If you if you think it's too way 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 too hard, then decide to do less. Okay, this is a skill. Remember, and it and it takes practice. So um, at first you might find well that was too easy, and so you'll make it harder. And the next week you might find it you made it way too hard, so make it easier. This is an ongoing process of practicing, OK? Um, and then, and this is absolutely essential, tell everyone. Now, this can mean two things. You can tell all your friends you're going to do it, and your family you, you, you're, you're going to do it, what you're going to do this week, as a kind of uh, accountability thing. Um, I've set up on the Make Music Your Life forum account, an accountability place every uh, every month where people write their three goals for the month what they're going to achieve including me by the way so um, telling people is a great way of getting that accountability and sort of increasing that motivation when things get tough I mean when I uh, have been doing this uh, production game thing I certainly um, found it incredibly motivating when I've been uh, waking up getting up at 4:30 every morning to, to prepare for this find it incredibly motivating that you lot know that I'm going to do it and, I'm, uh, and, and are waiting for me to do it. So tell everyone. But the second point about telling everyone is it's really important for you to tell the people who you live with, the people who are around you, who this um, setting aside a small chunk of time is going to affect, that you're going to do it and that you are not to be disturbed. Okay. Now this might involve all sorts of other conversations you need to have about why you're doing it and and what it's for and whether it's going to get, go anywhere. But just explain to them how important it is to you. And also, don't forget to let them know um, how it will positively affect them. The, the most obvious example of that would be uh, that you're going to be happier. You're going to be easier to live with. You're going to feel that you're actually moving forward with your personal goals. I know these conversations can be sometimes difficult because the people around us don't understand why we're doing this crazy music production thing. Trust me, I know it. I've, I've been through that. But the best way is just to talk to the people. These people, they love you. They want the best for you. And if you just tell them why you're doing it and how the benefits it's going to bring you and why you want to do it, um, and obviously that you are, not, you are not to be disturbed just for that small chunk of time, then you are setting expectation and you're more able to act on it. And by the way, it will take a while. You have to train people. <laughs> so uh, they'll burst in and they'll, they'll get used to it. But you just remind them of the agreement you made, and all will be well. OK. Then finally, of course, you've absolutely just got to do it. Act. If you fall off the wagon, don't worry. The wagon will still be waiting. You just get back on it. Everyone falls off the wagon. I fall off the wagon. I'm sure you know, even the most motivated people fall off the wagon and don't do what they say they're going to do. Things happen. Life happens. It's OK. Just get back on it. That is a, it's as simple as that. I mean, I, uh, in Start Now, Finish Fast, I um, actually give people a, uh, the way that habits work, a system for actually installing 
habits, but essentially, just do it, <laughs> okay? That's all you really need to do, just, just do it. So that's it for today. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be talking about how to make music by your own rules, and also about how to set yourself some rules for this production game. So that's it for today. Please tell everyone about it. Tweet about it, Facebook about it, write on forums about it, tell your friends about it. This is the uh, production game. Tell them to go to the production game.com. I'm going to stay online just to uh, chat to the people who are here with me uh, at the moment, as I always do. But until tomorrow, onwards and upwards, go and make some music right now. <laughs>